Hey there, this is Neil Davis from Digital Cloud Training. In this series of short videos, I'm going to walk you through some practice exam questions from my AWS Certified Developer Associate Practice Exam course. And what I'm going to do is walk you through my thought process. So how do I go about working out which answer or answers are correct? And how do I work out which answers are definitely incorrect? And I've been doing IT examinations for over 20 years, so I've got quite a bit of experience and I want to try and use that to sort of teach you a few techniques so that when you go and sit your exam, you've got a much greater chance of success. So I hope you find it valuable. See you in the videos. So question nine is an application is processing data from a Kinesis data stream. The data stream has 12 shards with one KCL worker each. The volume of data is increased and an additional six shards have been added to the stream. What is the maximum number of EC2 instances required for optimum performance? So we have Kinesis data streams. You'll remember that shards are the element of the data streams onto which you place your records. And each of those shards, so we've got 12 here, have one KCL worker each. Because the volume has increased, an additional six shards have been added, so we've now got 18 shards. What's the maximum number of instances required for optimum performance? Well, the good thing is, in this circumstance, the Kinesis data stream was properly configured in, to start with. So it had 12 shards with one KCL worker each. So actually, we want to stick to one KCL worker per shard. So it should be 18. So I don't need to investigate too much into these other options because the key fact that led me to understand this is that I know that each shard is processed by one KCL worker. And each shard also has one corresponding record processor. So you actually never need to have multiple instances process one shard. But one worker could process multiple shards. So you can have more shards than you do instances, but you shouldn't have more instances than you do shards. So the optimum or the maximum number that's required for optimum performance here would be 18 because we've got 12 plus six and we don't wanna have more than one KCL worker per shard. So I believe that should be 18. Let's check. And sure enough, that's the correct answer. And we've got a bit of a diagram here of a Kinesis data stream. The producers are actually sort of capturing and sending the data in. Each of these little purple lines is a shard. And then you've got your consumers on EC2. And these are KCL workers that run on EC2 instances and they process the data. So they'll then connect into a shard and they'll pull that data and then it can go to a destination. So it could be one of these possible destinations. So let's go down and click next. And for question 10, a developer needs to configure an elastic load balancer that is deployed through AWS Elastic Beanstalk. Where should the developer place the load-balancer.config file in the application source bundle? So we have a configuration file here, a .config file. Now we almost don't need to know anything else in this question. The fact that it's an elastic load balancer doesn't really matter. What all I need to know to get this answer correct is where the .config files go. So .config files do help you to customize your Elastic Beanstalk installation but where do you have to put them? Do you put them in the root of the source code, in the bin folder, in the load-balancer.config.root, or in the .eb extensions folder? Now, this is one of those facts that you absolutely have to know for the exam. When you see this question, you should just be going straight here, .eb extensions. I know that all config files, .config files, must go in the .eb extensions folder. So these are actually YAML or JSON formatted documents and they'll always go in the root of the .eb extensions folder. So in the root of the source code, no, should be in the eb extensions folder. In the bin folder, no. And the loadbalancer.config.root file, that's incorrect as well. So I'm pretty sure that it's the .eb extensions folder. So let's choose check. And sure enough, that looks like the correct answer. And we can see here that we have an example of a option settings that is within a .config file. So this is saying that the, in this case, the Elastic Beanstalk environment will have a load balancer and it will be a network load balancer.